Tomorrow Pictures. The story is in the telling. And then coming out of Jeff, what do you have to look forward to? Well, I'm not coming out of Jeff. No, I mean just generally. You know, if you would... Nothing really. I mean, uh, you, after you come out of Jeff, you ain't learned nothing. You don't know nothing. I mean, that little piece of paper don't mean nothing. I mean, that's all they're doing. They're going to pass you, if, I don't care if you're retarded. You know, you can be dumb as a spade. You know, they're going to they gonna graduate you anyway. What you going to do with it? <laughs> what am I going to do with math? With math, yeah. What I'm, I'm going to do with math, what I'm going to go into is for the um, police force. That's the academy that I'm going in. You're going to be a police for that? I'm going to try it. What you going to take? I'm going to be a nurse, a male nurse. Yeah. Um, watch television a lot you know and and all I would see is a white man using guns and I'll defeat the Indian everywhere I turn you know they use violence you know wars to win over things you know and that's the only way I can see that things could be accomplished John was telling me you went up to this church thing they took y'all up in the mountains yeah. to uh, Camp Spirit or whatever it was. Uh, Camp Enchantment or whatever it was. Dark. And you came back, man, and you was... You ain't Ted, man. Uh, no, you're <laughs> <laughs> I was came back and I was what? You was all spiritual and talking about you gonna... You tore up your chairman, you know, that little old red book you got by Mao to something? Yeah, you, you tore it up. up. You tore it up. That, that, that book was gone a long time ago, man. Mom got dark. on my case about the It's time to get ready to now. The first time I got suspended from school was March the 7th, 1969. We had a, had a walkout on March the 6th. Some students got together. They protested against teachers that wasn't teaching and books that was made when I was born back in 1954 or so. They can't. We just discount these two guys. I, I, oh, no. Now, now we're playing four-way. Well, if we play partners, you know we're going to have a damn chance. So I went over to Adam. And the students on campus, some students knew me. And they thought I was going to do the same thing over at Adams that happened over at Carver. I was called in the office, later surrounded by security guards, and, you know, and sent home. And they tried to accuse me of burning the flag. <laughs> it went on time. You see, you was trying to get Big Six out of town. Just keep that up. It's coming. Leo going to get it. No, Leo ain't going to get it. Leo going to mess up. What? Went over to Edison for one day, got kicked out over there. I ended up staying out of school, you know, for the rest of that school year, and they let me in Jefferson High School, you know, after the summer. They told me I better not be involved in anything on that campus. You ain't got no army, you ain't got no Air Force. Okay. Only got three niggas in the world got an airplane. <laughs> Shit, they ain't got no bombs to go along with you running out there. And I bet you all white men gotta do is let all this food let you niggas go down to the market, buy up all the food out of shop right in the ABC. That's all you got in your community in Ralph. And then when all the food is gone, he stop his trucks from coming downtown. Then you niggas be eating each other. You ain't got to do nothing. I spray you with DDT. You better get hip, boy. Shit. Better get the buck, man. Get the buck, man. When you, when you start controlling Dow Jones Industrial, and start getting some niggas in the World Bank, you understand? You get some niggas up there in the Western House, and every time the president want to raise the price of gold, he got to call 12 of us in and six of them, then we saying something. I have two brothers besides myself and a stepsister. One brother's uh, 21 now. Uh, he's in the Marine Corps. Another's my twin brother. Say, man, I'm a future temptation, brother. Remember that. I'm your twin brother, brother. Freddie, you know, he's interested in music. He has a singing group, you know. He's been with him for about, about four or five years now. You know. Can turn the gray sky blue. Uh. I can build a castle from the single grain of sand. I can make a ship sail, huh? Oh, darling. 
But my life is incomplete and I'm so blue uh, Cause I can't get next to you Can't get next to you, baby Get next to you I just can't get next to you No matter what I do I can fly like a bird in the sky I can buy anything that money can buy. I can turn a river into a rainbow. I can turn a river into a rainbow. Oh, the things I can do. I can't get next to you. I can't get next to you, baby. I can't get next to you. There's a lot of people that mess with Reds in the community, but they usually, you know, take them at night, you know, and at parties, when they get ready to go to parties. But I see young brothers and sisters, you know, smoking weed all day, you know, at school, you know, at night, you know, and just about wherever I go, you know. But usually in the daytime, it's only a small minority of black people, black young people, you know, that take Reds, but they would smoke marijuana. They are planning to make marijuana legal. At first, when the marijuana was in the black community, in the Chicano community, they say, uh, well, just control them, you know. But then when the white people start seeing their white kids white use kids. marijuana and say, hey, this cow gonna put my kid in jail? We gotta do something about this. So they can say, let's make marijuana legal. Marijuana, uh, I believe if people want to use it, you know, if, if they if they dig on getting high, you know, and everything, well, you know, it's them. I guess I'm just this type of person, you know, I don't like to get in no kind of position where I can't, you know, plant properly. When something take effect on me that I don't understand, it's, it's a feeling, you know, I just can't stand it. I tried it, you know, three times. You know, I wasn't myself and I seemed like I couldn't come back to myself right then. I guess I wasn't used to it and I was kind of scared of it in a way. Whatever it is we feel that, yeah, you feel that not only that you're having problems with, but that you want to learn, come on and we'll research it and we'll find out about it and you take all of that back. And you ain't got to bait the teacher and go on, well, you wrong, you know, blah, blah, this, that, and the other on him, you know, because he's going to get all weird on you then and going to start firing on you from a mental thing and want to send you to the VP's office for being smart. The Avalon College Community Center program was set up to uh, get teachers and students, to, you know, together, get them to know one another, you know. Our educational program in the schools itself is falling down. Secondly, when you youngsters try to help yourself, you're not even getting school teachers to come here to help you. So these things ought to be examined. Why is this so? Okay, do you think you're as smart as uh, probably one of them white students out in Hollywood? Yeah. Have you ever came into contact with a white student on your same age bracket? No, I have. You have? Have you? Nope. What about you? Throw them big words on me, you know, think I'm just dumb. There's so many things wrong with the schools over here in the ghettos. Black students in my school, they, they came up, you know, from uh, elementary school and junior high school, and uh, I'll say half of them, you know, don't know how to read. You know, they should have been taught those things in elementary and junior high school, and uh, they wasn't, you know, and uh, it's hard for them to go through high school, and uh, they're not really learning anything. I first came in contact with uh, with some Vista workers up at Avalon called the Community Center. They had just rented a building in the community, and they wanted to know what could they uh, open the building for. We were discussing what we want this meeting, this school to be, you know, uh, what we wanted, you know, to have in this building. Uh, we came up with some ideas, what things we could do in the community, you know, using this for a community center and. Uh, you know, having some type of counseling program where if young people got, you know, harassed by the police or, you know, had trouble at school with administrators and other teachers, they could, uh, you know, come here and talk to someone. I found myself going to meetings up at uh, South Park, and they had other organizations up there, you know, Black Panther Party. And they was passing out some new red books, you know, quotes from Mao C. Tom. So I picked up one of these books and started going through it. And I began to see that statement in there, and uh, political power grows at the end of a gun barrel. It began to stick with me. I read in the paper today they made a they made a brother admiral. 
One brother. One brother, they made him an admiral. You understand? They want everybody to get happy. They probably had it on KGFJ this week. You know? The guy started off as a post office clerk and worked his way up. After 74 years in the Navy, they made him an admiral. So we are making that? progress. 74 that years. Progress. That's what it is. Progress? So you a fool? How the hell progress. is that progress, man? Just, Wait a minute, what did you say? You just five. said you, five. You just said a few minutes ago that. No, but it made me mad when you say talking about progress. No, man. you just said. How you, you gonna make it go high? How you gonna make progress, man? How can we change the society in our community and get power? We have we don't have guns and machines and all this type of stuff. So you're gonna infiltrate the police department. No, I didn't right. say you jumping something. Right. I'm talking about the Admiral, okay? Isn't what was the Admiral's job? Well, it's an Admiral's job, yeah. I think this guy here, he's going to command three ships by up in Alaska, you see. And he's going to make sure that the Russians don't steal all the tuna <laughs> out of the water. <laughs> you, you see that picture up there on that wall, man? Every time I look at that picture, you know, I want to curse my brother out about that, man. I say, okay, he came on the other day, you know. I just asked him, is that necessary, you know? Okay, he said, yeah, you know, it is necessary. You know, we don't want communism to take over this country or something. I said, hey, man, uh, regardless, you know, uh, you got all those people, you know, uh, in that hole over there. I said, hey, man, uh, don't you think we should, you know, stay in our country and try to do something in this country to straighten up everything instead of trying to go out and fight somebody else's war and ain't doing nothing but killing off a lot of innocent people, man? To me, a revolutionary is a person who wants change by either peaceful means or violent means, if necessary. They have more out in wants than they had before that riot, you know. I noticed white people was beginning to focus on Watts, wanting to find out what's going on in Watts, what's the problems, you know. What do these people want over there? And they was beginning to do something because they were scared. They didn't want it to happen again. That's why I believe violence worked there. The Black Panther Party started off, but every little youngster I see wanted to be a Black Panther, you know. But it seems like now, you know, they fighting against each other. See, uh, the pigs are the police department. Oh, y'all not y'all not used to that language, so I use police department. No, see, they, uh, the Irvines, somebody's a rookie or something. Yeah. We know what's going on. That's right, the Irvines, man. The pigs. The fascists. Right on, <laughs> man. Okay, the dog, whatever you want to call it. The police department, the pigs, man. And, you know, they didn't, um, they ripped off all the Black Panther leaders, man. So the ones that's there, you know, yeah, they, they're good followers, and no, they're not leaders, man. See, they stopped the free breakfast program. You just said they had all the leaders. Maybe that's all they need, huh? another leader. Another leader ain't gonna do nothing but get ripped up again, send to prison, or get shot or something. We'll get, get more and more and more. Hey, man, how, how far can we go? You got to. It's got to start somewhere. Hey, man, look. Uh, We've been starting. That's the whole point. We've been starting all types of places, started. man. Starting. Starting. <laughs> no, starting to be destroyed. <laughs> Office. It seemed like it was a battle. They had about five or six people who chopped up in the building shooting, you know. And whatever the, the Panthers brought out, you know, they brought out something bigger, you know. I even seen the tank rolling up the street with police department on it. When I went down to the Panther office a couple of days later, you know, they helped clean out the building. And I went up there, I had to wear a gas mask because the fumes were so strong. I seen bullet holes in all of the walls, you know. We had a group outside. I says about two or three hundred, you know. A police car came around, and a man got up out of the car and said that uh, this was an unlawful assembly, you know, would you please disperse? The people didn't leave, you know. So the police, they got out of their uh, cars, and they started beating heads again. And one of the sisters that was out there was Angela Davis. She got beat that night. But from that incident, I realized that we can't use the gun because, uh, if we pick up, you know, a 45, he's gonna pick up a rifle, you know. If we pick up a rifle, he's gonna use a tank. So I guess we're just gonna have to wait. You know, and, uh, you know, 
know, regardless to what other young people think, you know, I think I judge from experience, you know. I guess I want to be, be myself, be somebody new, you know, instead of somebody saying, oh yeah, he's like Malcolm X. I want to say he's like Teddy Gibson, you know, I mean, <laughs> whatever that is, you know. Come out to the house of God. And as we come, Master, we know that it's no business of our own. But it's by the grace of God that thou hast brought us this far. We pray, Master, for the blessing upon each and every one which is in the building. This is tomorrowpictures.tv.